Hi, it's Bon and welcome to my little space online where I talk about my visual art shenanigans. I hope you're all doing well this holiday season. I was supposed to fly over to Calgary to visit the family over the holidays, but that didn't happen because my flight kept getting cancelled due to extreme weather and lack of airport staff. Actually, the footage that I showed earlier in this video was just from before my flight got cancelled. So yeah, that was a mess. Anyway, while I was trying to sort everything out with the airlines, I decided to just get into the holiday spirit here in Toronto to try and tone down my frustration. And while I'm at it, test a couple of films and make some content for y'all to consume in this hyper-capitalist season. I visited the distillery district where they were having this Winter Village Festival, which is pretty much a Christmas market type of deal. And as if in consolation, that day was fairly bright for winter, so I thought that was probably the best time to test the role of Santa Collar 100. Santa Collar 100 is a color negative film, which at least according to the Indiegogo campaign that I supported, was respooled by Santa's elves in Finland. It's not a new film stock, but rather a repackaged air surveillance film from a major manufacturer. I wanted to load this film into my contacts S2, but alas, it already has a roll of Fuji Color 100 that I've barely shot. So I decided to load the Santa Color film into my Minolta X700 instead. Anybody else have that problem where you load a camera with film, but then you don't use it, so you forget about it until you want to use the camera again? No? Anyways, based on what I saw from others online, the Santa Color 100 has a fairly neutral tone with reddish shadows. The reds really seem to pop on this film, so during this photo walk, I tried to take as many photos with red as the highlight. Based on these first few photos, I really like the look of this film. It has a color palette that's quite different from more commonly available film stocks like Kodak Portra or Gold, but it's still realistic. I also like the earthy feel of some of these shots that I took. But back to the Winter Village. As you can see, there's a lot of pop-up vendors that sell seasonal items, trinkets, and even food. One of the main attractions is this giant Christmas tree where people gather around to take photos. It has a Dior sign, of course. <laughs> Capitalism. Here, I bumped into JC and her friend, so of course I took their photo.
yeah, I think Santa Color 100 is pretty good. What do you guys think? Now, I shot this film at box speed, but according to the Indiegogo campaign, this film can be pushed 3 levels up to ISO 800 with still good results. I might try to shoot this at 800 at some point, especially because it's winter now and we don't really get that much light outdoors. Speaking of not getting much light, as the sun started to set that day, I decided to load a roll of Reflex Lab 800T into my camera. Similar to Santa Color 100, this Reflex Lab 800T film is also a respooled Kodak film stock, but this time, it's Kodak Vision 3 500 tungsten with a ramjet layer removed. Sounds familiar? Yeah, it's pretty much the same as Cinestill 800T, but still a little cheaper. And just like with Cinestill 800T, you will get that iconic red halation on bright sources of light. Because it's a tungsten balance film, you will get a cool color palette as it's supposed to counterbalance the warm light from tungsten bulbs. I find that this film stock has an amazing color rendition, especially the blues and reds. Use this film stock during blue hour, trust me, you won't regret it. One of my gripes with the Reflex Lab 800T is that the first 8 shots of my roll had light leaks on them, some of which are quite prominent. Now, I'm not sure if this is from the film, though I think my camera's light seals are quite intact and a lot of other people that I talked to had light leaks as well on theirs. But this really reminded me of pre-2020 Cinestill 800T before they tweaked their method of ramjet removal. Since then, I haven't had any problems with Cinestill having random light leaks, so if this is a similar case, I sure hope that Reflex Lab would be able to fix it too. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more if you haven't yet. And I will see you all in the next one. Happy holidays. Cheers.